Okay guys, we're down here in Yuma and we just dropped off that other piece of machinery and what you can see behind me is the second piece of machinery for the return trip. Now this one was very interesting, so today is not going to be anything fancy, just going to be some good old fashioned edumacation. Okay, on this machine, there were only two actual tie-down points, and those were right up here, there. Uh, there's one there, and then there's one on the other side, and so I had to improvise. Um, I was able to, once again, run the chains through there by taking the, uh, the cotter pins out of the hooks, removing the hooks, running the train chains through there. Luckily for me, uh, I was able to fit two through there. So, I was able, on both the front and the back, to run the chains down to the center of the trailer, which this is exactly what I was talking about yesterday, uh, how I have the rails in the center and I can use those J hooks. So I didn't, I wasn't crazy about that being the only point of securement uh, because it's not going to protect from side to side. So I saw that here on the base that I could get some chains in there and put the chains on all four corners and between all eight chains, that should be that should keep everything nice and sturdy and it should keep it from uh from swaying side to side so we're going to be really careful on this it is top heavy and uh yeah it's only 19,900 pounds the other one was a little over 16,000 pounds so and you know pick that up on a saturday delivered on a sunday pick this up on a sunday delivering it as fast as i can on a monday so unfortunately i won't be able to throw anything else on the trailer but that's all right. Uh, now, what we're moving into is we're going to put some padding for this tarp job, which is gonna be just heavenly. Um, but as you can see, I started here. These stick out uh, beyond the sides of this piece of machinery here. So I'm gonna take as much as I can and try to do the best I can to not put any more holes in these tarps. All right, guys, as you can see behind me, got all the padding up there. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, um, you know, I just, I use bungees to kind of hold them in place and that, that'll be good enough. Uh, also you can see behind me the, uh, the ladder of death. Uh, that almost ended this video and yours truly. <laughs> but uh, we live on. You know today I have already had a gallon of water. I started this venture at uh, about 11 o'clock local and it is now 2.30 and we are uh, now about to fill the tarps so gallon of water. Yeah. Yeah, Yuma one, driven, two seg. All right, no clue if you can hear me or not. So I'll talk loudly, but this time, instead of, instead of like what I did yesterday, this time the, uh, the machine is a little bit more boxy. So I pulled forward enough that my two sides I'm gonna be able to base it to nearly fold them in on each other. Uh, ideally, they'd be overlapping, but I ran out of room. Um, you know, this way there is gonna be a little bit of gap there, so I may get some airflow. But it, overall, it's not gonna be too bad. So I try to, you know, pick one side, tuck it down and away from the front, and then likewise on the other side. I'm only gonna show you this on one side, but well, I've got it bungeed in. But I'll have this one trying to go over, and then. My flap will fold out nicely. <laughs> and you can either take a stick, lay the wood across, strap it down, um, or you can just let it roll, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna evaluate for the first 80 miles and then uh, head up to Quartzsite. But uh, yeah, so stay tuned, there's more coming. So it's gonna look something like that. Well guys, I just can't do it today. Uh, I'm gonna head over to the Loves and, and cool off and, uh, and finish this video. Well guys, sorry about that. I, uh, wow, that was interesting. Uh, I, got, I got heat exhaustion and uh, it wasn't dehydration. I mean, I had, uh, I had a gallon and three quarters of water today uh, and actually in a short period of time, I knew that I was sweating profusely uh, but the issue was I, you know, I, I got there at, or the appointment time was supposed to be nine o'clock. Uh, I called them 
and uh, I came to this loves that I'm sitting at called them up and uh, you know thankfully I did call them because they said that they would be there at about 10 so um, and then it was just you know it took a long time I mean sometimes machinery just takes a long time unfortunately and uh, you know it is what it is uh, I wound up finishing about 315 so being in the Sun that long and you know not eating it's just well quite frankly it's just stupid so chalk that one up in the stupid column but I feel much better now I've got some food in my belly and uh, let's go over I do have a few more tarp tips for you so I'm gonna turn you around hold on a second all right so back here in the back this is what I was trying to point out yesterday this one came out much much nicer and uh, you know you, you just you, you create those seams again and I'll go ahead and if you missed the other video I've got a couple other tarping videos but I have one that goes over the basics and I talk about the seams and you actually get to see them and I'll link that video up there in the corner so you can click on that one and then if you like come back to this one but I, when you create these seams and then you fold them together you try to pull them upward a little bit on the sides and then what that will do is that'll create a nice bottom right here a nice floor and you can take the tails and you can swing them up and it'll fold around that floor that you've made down there creating a nice nice vent back here and that is going to be huge for airflow that's going to be huge for miles per gallon and wear and tear on the tarps and it's just just overall it's just really good thing uh, but moving up here to the front the front is the real trouble spot uh, especially when dealing with chains when you have to come outward to deal with these chains so as you can see right here you know that's just a trouble spot there, there's really no way around it unfortunately I had to I had to use those tie down points and uh, it just is what it is you know there's gonna be air that gets through there so I'm glad that the vent back there in the back is the size that it is um, you know the, the vent is gonna change sizes uh, <laughs> I haven't figured out how to perfect it to uh, to actually make it a, a certain size every time so it kind of changes and uh, this time it happened to be pretty large and that's gonna work out well for us here is a very good example of weaving tarps together and you can do that on the side of the trailer when you've got, you know, you've got tarps kind of overlapping each other or when you have flaps uh, for your tarps. So, you know, these are, this is a really good example here. This is gonna, this, these, these two are gonna act like one, basically, because you've, you've sewn them together. And so I like that. That was a nice trick that, uh, you know, I was part doing a 34 next to, a, next to a guy that had a, he had a step deck and he had a, big old piece of machinery back there and it was all tarped up and we got to talking about it and you know that's a great way to learn too is just ask these guys out here you know the majority of the time they're gonna be more than help you know more than happy to help you out and pass along information because that's how they gain their knowledge you know these guys that have been out here a long time that's how they used to pass down knowledge so don't be afraid to ask these guys out here uh, and I went with the stick and strapping it down and that was because it just wasn't it just wasn't working out right for me the other way I tried to just bungee it down but you know with that trouble spot right here it actually made that trouble spot much much larger so I thought eh, I'm just gonna throw a stick down and uh, that's the way we're gonna go with it well, all right so between the last video and this one that's that's about all I got for uh, tarping machinery so if you like the video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and remember as always stay driven all right guys I'm pretty sure I just wiped dirt all over my face. That may not go on the vlog. I don't know, it might. Anyway. Well guys, we're gonna end this video with a quote. And it comes from Sammy over on the Make Sense channel. And it's something that he always says. And he says, you gotta think high to rise. Winners never quit. And quitters never tarp in Yuma in July around lunchtime. Well, I think he says something like that. <laughs>